we're gonna try something new today. Hi everybody! If you're watching this video, that means that you are probably interested in learning how to lip trail, and we are going to jump right into that. We're gonna go ahead and jump into some exercises that I've done over the last couple years to help me achieve my lip trail. Um, and you probably heard some of it in the opening. I do know how to do one, so we're gonna get there. A quick disclaimer though, these exercises are the ones that got me to do my lip trail. I did them all kind of at different times throughout my education. They all played a role in how I got my lip trail, so I'll show them all to you, kind of how I was introduced to them, and we'll just go from there. So we're gonna start from easiest, easiest, I mean they're different for everybody, easiest to hardest. Um, mostly it's the order that I was introduced to these exercises until I achieved my lip trail. All of them, well pretty much all of them, we'll start at C in the staff, so C5, and we'll be trailing up to the D just above it, and that's pretty much all we're gonna be doing. I'll tell you otherwise if it's different. Also, in this video, I'm going to, hopefully, it'll be here. Also, in this video, I am hoping to put notation somewhere on the screen. I don't know where it'll be yet, but it'll be somewhere on there, so you can follow along with that as well, instead of me just trying to talk music notes at you. So with that, let's get started. Here are four exercises that I've done throughout my time playing horn that helped me achieve my lip trail. So our first exercise is... I've heard it called the lip flip before. Some of you may know it as that. Um, it's an exercise me and my high school teacher kind of made up together to help me get a lip trail. And all it does is you do quarter notes, C in the staff, and then you try to flip up to the next note. It's just getting used to the motion of a lip trail. So it should sound like this. just getting used to flipping up to the next note, that's why they call it a flip, and back down, because that's what you'll need to do in a lip, in a lip trill. <laughs> With all these exercises I'm going to be talking about, you can also vary them. You can also speed them up or slow them down. I do suggest starting at a comfortable tempo and then speeding up from there. Don't just jump into something where you're like, oh my god, because you need to get used to this motion in your in your face and learn how to use your air with it. You can also vary the rhythm. I just did a quick little thing just to get used to the motion. Once you do that, you can add on notes so it can sound like this. Or you can make up whatever you want. Just have fun with it. Exercise number two. I do remember I got it from a book I used in high school a lot, from the Farkas book. Some horn players may know about that. If you don't, that's okay, because I'm gonna write it out for you. <laughs> so all this is, is just slowly getting faster, but in time, you're gonna go from quarter notes to groups of eighth notes, triplets, sixteenth notes, and finally into a trill. Each one of those groups of rhythms having one measure to themselves. And then with every note, with every rhythm, you change the note in the trill. So let me just demonstrate. Something like that. Something that may also help you guys, my teacher told me to think of a trill um, like wiggling between two notes. Uh, you have your bottom note, in this case we've been playing on C, C, and then the note above it is D. And the whole kind of point of a trill and wiggling between the notes is finding a sweet spot between them. Most of the time as brass players we are told to hit the middle of the target and we want the middle of the note. With a trill, at least visually in my brain, I think of it more as like, for the C, I'm hitting more of the top of the note, and the D, I'm just barely wiggling it up so I can hit the bottom of that, and it becomes really easy to hit in between those two notes. So you're not actually necessarily targeting a note like you're used to when you're playing. You want to be able to schmooze around <laughs> the two of them, so in between the notes. Once you get better at those two exercises, there's another one that I learned in college that my <laughs> my friends and my teachers lovingly call them ladders. I personally feel like they're easier to listen to a couple times and then mimic rather than read it, so I will play them for you slowly, maybe once or twice, and you can always I'm gonna watch this video as much as you need to. You'll understand why they're called ladders when I play them for you. So here we go. <laughs> so it's kind of weird. I will have that 
annotated for you somewhere on here too. You listen to this as many times as you need, or play along with me, or read the notes, whatever helps you. But the whole point of that is to get you used to wiggling in between notes in a lot of different parts of your horn and different ranges. And also you can speed up the ladders as much as you need. I have heard some people do them insanely fast, like fast where I'm kind of like, are, are, are you a human? Are you real? Nah. You can literally speed it up to whatever is possible. I do them at about this tempo. That's like a comfortable tempo for me. Again, I had to work up to that. I, I could probably push it a little faster if I'm trying to make it sound as clean as possible. And I've known people that could push it a lot. Do what's comfortable for you and figure it out. The last exercise I'm going to show you guys isn't isn't so much to help achieve a trill in my opinion, it's more like after you kind of feel like you have a trill going. Um, it is what I do every day if I have a really small amount of time for a fundamentals routine and I just kind of want to touch everything, this is what I do. So I'll go ahead and show you guys. I don't really have a special name for this <laughs> like I do some of the others, but I did get it from the Wendell Ryder book and I'll go ahead and put that link in the description as well as the Farkas one actually. I'll do that too. I basically use it to speed into a trill and speed out of it. That is how I use this, but what it's supposed to be <laughs> is um, you start one octave below your trill. So if we're doing C in the staff, I start at middle C or C4 just below the staff. You go up the overtone series, and if you don't know what that is, don't worry, the notation is somewhere. <laughs> um, but I start at C below the staff. You go up the overtone series, just four notes, until you hit C in the staff, and then you trill, and you come back out of it. And I will demonstrate it to you so it makes more sense. <laughs> variation of it. Um, I do it very without a sense of time and you can do it like that or otherwise. I practiced it like that for a while because I was playing an unaccompanied piece where I had to play with my trills a lot so that's just what it's turned into. The reason I do the octave going into it, slurring into the trill and then back out of it is because it helps you keep your your embouchure relaxed. What I've noticed with even some students of mine and I saw it in myself when I first learned how to trill is when you trill, it sounds like tinny, like tin can tinny, very like stretched and thin and not what a trill should sound like, especially on a horn. So doing those octaves into the trill and out of the trill helps you to remember to relax. <laughs> so with that, those are my four exercises that got me to do my lip trill. If I could give any advice, it would be that trilling is kind of like riding a bike. I think. <laughs> um, for me it clicked one day. There's a day where I kind of accidentally did a lip trill where I was like, wait was that it? Was that a lip trill? I, I think it was but it was an accident. And I did trills on accident. <laughs> I would be doing these exercises and it would happen and then I would try it again and sometimes it would happen and sometimes it wouldn't. So it clicked where it was just hard to make them happen on command. But when it happened, it happened like that. I remember once I got the trill, it took me maybe a couple weeks, I would say two solid weeks of these exercises before I could have more of a command of, I'm gonna do a trill right now. <laughs> once you get it, it's, it's right there. <laughs> you are so close to the goal. Hopefully these exercises have helped. If you have any questions or concerns, you can contact me in the comment box below, or you can follow me on social media too. I have an Instagram and a Twitter that should be down in the description. <laughs> uh, even if you just get a, a lip trail and you just wanna share it with the world, like show me, I would love to see that. <laughs> that makes me really happy. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel. On top of this sort of thing, I do French horn covers every Thursday and I normally do them for popular like films or video games because that's what I like. <laughs> this is a new thing for me though. I think on top of the Thursday covers, I also want to do a vlog type thing on Mondays that'll cover how-tos and tutorials like this and kind of want to do more fun things like um, vacations or maybe behind the scenes at gigs that I play in or I, well I just have a lot of ideas. I'll let them be surprises. But let me know if you like this kind of thing because I'll do more of them in the future then. Thank you so, so, so much for your support. <laughs> I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video. Bye!